now imagine you're a parent, maybe a mom, maybe a foster parent, and you get that dreaded phone call. Your son is in trouble. You go downtown, you deal with the authorities, you say the usual expected things, oh my, oh my. And then you come face to face with your son. He looks a little nervous, a little worried, and he says he wants out. Well, you're in trouble, that's understandable. Then he says to me, get the key, open the door. Well, I don't have the key. So I try to explain the situation when he leans on his arm and he says, well, you could secret open it and no one will know. Well, I have a secret too. I'm not a foster mom. I'm a cross-species, cross-foster mom. And I raised a baby orangutan. I am also of Coast Salish and Blackfoot descent, First Nations of Canada. And the Blackfoot followed the buffalo west. And when the buffalo disappeared, the people starved. So legend says one day, an old woman with holes in her robe went out looking for firewood. And she heard someone singing. And she looked around. She couldn't see anyone. And then she looked down, and she saw a calling stone, an ammonite fossil shell that was magical among all the other things on the ground. And she took the stone and she gave it to the tribe and they called it Inniskim, the buffalo calling stone. This connected the Blackfoot with the buffalo again. They made contact for native peoples Animals are persons of the non-human kind. Well, I didn't raise a baby buffalo, raised a baby orangutan, and taught him to use sign language. Now, I want to ask you, did your child use his first words around one year of age? Mine did. Did your child start to indicate by looking at things and then looking back at you and then eventually pointing with a finger, say around 13, 15 months. Mine did. Did yours ride a tricycle or like to go to the lake or the mountains or play games like tic-tac-toe, Simon Says Copy Game, play chase? Mine did. It was a journey that I started with Chantek that is still continuing. Chantek was fascinated with aspects of human culture. First time it ever snowed, he couldn't believe it. And then when he made his first snowball, that's when he really understood the power. Chantek learned a number of different signs. His first signs were eat, and drank, and he was able to add a vocabulary of hundreds and hundreds of words, which he could put together in combinations, subject, verb, object. He could add information. He could sit and have a two-way conversation. He even made up some of his own signs. He liked hamburgers, so he asked for cheese, meat, breads, cheeseburgers. And now we wanted ketchup to go with his cheeseburger. Didn't have a word for ketchup, so we put together tomato toothpaste. <laughs> ketchup. He even told lies with his signs. It's a scientific project, so we tried to study how many lies he told. We found three per week but those were the only ones we could detect. What kind of lies would he tell? At night, going to bed, he would tell us that he had to use the bathroom. 
but we went in there, he'd be soaping up the mirror. Or he'd tell us at night that we had to go look for dangerous wild cats on campus. And he would just swing in the trees and hide behind the fence. One time we found peas and carrots behind his toilet. He didn't like his vegetables. <laughs> Human culture was a challenge for Chantek. How do you eat spaghetti? And talking on the telephone. Well, he signed because apes have a different shaped vocal tract than humans do, and they can use non-vocal forms of communication. So we would translate for him. Well, he kind of liked that. He got the hang of it. He began dialing random numbers. And once we got a call back, the person was very angry about the harassing phone call. And we had to explain the heavy breather was an orangutan. <laughs> Chantag loved to go to different places in the community. And he would sign go, sitting in the car, directing us this direction or that direction. And he knew pathways to the lake, to the forest, to the mountains, to the fast food, and to the ice cream stores. He understood the concept of money. He would sign what he wanted, we would translate, and he would pass the money over to the window. Well, we were running out of money pretty quickly. So I went to the hardware store and got circular metal washers. I called them Chantec Silver Dollars. And he had an allowance. In the morning, if he cleaned his room, if he helped prepare breakfast, did other tasks, he got five Chantec Dollars. And then he could spend those throughout the day. We taught him to save, and we taught that he had to give one away in charity. Well, money is what got him into trouble. Because later, when he was at uh, a zoo, his enclosure had a ceiling, concrete and bars, made of nuts, bolts, and metal washers. Money! So he began disassembling them and went to the caregivers to buy some cheeseburgers. Made sense to him, well, Got him in a little bit of trouble that time. He wasn't too happy about that. Didn't make sense. So Chantek has some other unique abilities. He is the only animal in the world who makes jewelry. He saw some of my own native necklaces that I wear. He wanted one too. So what we taught him to do was to string stones and beads and it didn't really require much teaching. We just provided him with the materials. He'd happily construct them, position the stone, and then tie a knot, and then proudly wear his necklace. He made orangutan-sized necklaces for himself and smaller ones for us, and even some with adjustable clasp. I don't even know how to do that. So this is quite remarkable and tells us a lot about the capacity for tool making in the great apes. Chantek also loved art. He would make finger paintings with his hand. And in prehistoric times, humans would combine charcoal and ochre with saliva and make spit painting hand shapes. Chantek's art developed in a style that was beautiful and a lot like calligraphy. The art, the artist. But one of the most moving things for me in living with Chantek was his, the development of his empathy. There was one time at the zoo I was working with him and it started to rain and Chantek had a bunch of materials in his enclosure. One was a long, stiff piece of cloth and he put it on his head. And then he looked out and he saw, I didn't have anything, I was getting wet. So he took the cloth, he tore it in half, and he pushed it through the bars and he told me to put it on my head. And we stood there against the building in the rain and all Chantek signed was rain, rain. 
Well, he's not the only great ape to have learned language. Now over a dozen chimpanzees, bonobos, gorillas and orangutans have learned to communicate through non-vocal means. Coco, a signing gorilla, invented a sign for a ring. She didn't have a word. She calls it a finger bracelet. And Washo, the first grade eight to learn sign language, and actually the one who taught me, was able to sign hug to her foster son, Lulus. And Lulus would leap into her arms when he was afraid. Bonobo Kanzi knows computer lexigram language. He knows hundreds of words, and he also, like Chantek, makes prehistoric stone tools. Chantek makes them the way we think prehistoric humans made them. Kanzi developed a technique of throwing them, and then chips would fly off, and he would use the chips to cut things. It's not just the great apes. We now have a talking parrot, several, who understand what they say. The parrot Alex can identify shapes and textures and colors and can even count. And not only are we teaching language to these animals, but we're listening for what their language is. Diane Reese has communicated with dolphins, trying to understand their natural communication system, and also showed that dolphins have mirror self-recognition. We put a dot on the forehead of an animal and then look to see if in the mirror they rub it off or maybe they start grooming their face. That tells us they recognize that's them in the mirror. Now, Chantek is an adult and when I see him at the zoo, he says he wants a car <laughs> and he wants to come home. Where is home for an enculturated orangutan? He li lives between two worlds, living with other orangutans, making orangutan calls, doing orangutan things, and then the human world of symbols, of imagination, of technology. Well, when we first created zoos centuries ago, we didn't know about animal culture. We didn't know the natural abilities that they have. And we certainly didn't realize that they could learn human language at the level of a two or three year old child and other cognitive skills at the level of a seven or eight year old child. Now think about that. In human history, many religions, philosophies, law systems recognize awareness and sentience and knowledge as a person at around seven years of age. Well, what would happen at a Chan Tech, kind of like Caltech or Georgia Tech? He would learn his own natural culture. Orangutans are the least known of the great apes. They have two toolkits that they use. One set of sticks are short and stubby, one are long and thin, they carry them around with them. And they use them to process different fruits. One fruit is spiny and hard, the other is soft. They also collect small lizards and birds' eggs, and they do spear fishing. So Chantek would learn all of these natural skills and hopefully teach this to other orangutans who would also know sign language and could communicate with him. Chimpanzees take stones and they crack nuts. Bonobos create little pathways in the forest. In this 21st century, we are aware of animal culture and intelligence in a way that we never knew in the beginning. Now, people in zoos mean well. They care for the animals and they provide occasional enrichment. But imagine a whole place built around the natural culture and intelligence of these great apes and other animals. Part of my vision is thinking about Chantek living in this kind of community. What if 
you could log on to the internet with your child and have a conversation with Chantek? Or what if a parrot could say to a gorilla, do you want a cracker? Well, there's another secret, and that is about our species. When we did that first hand cave painting, we were reaching out to make contact with others. Now Voyager has gone into space beyond the solar system, the Hubble telescope, the SETI project. We want to make contact with non-human intelligence. And I say we can do that right here on Earth in a Chan Tech, an animal culture center. Chantec is reaching out to us. Chantec now has the calling stone. Chantec signs, friend, will you welcome Chantec, the first animal person? Thank you. <laughs>